All right, so in this video, we'll be uh, looking at digestion and nutrition as, again, as an intro to our study of uh, zoology. And so um, our first group to talk about is a group called autotrophs. Autotrophs are self-feeding organisms. None of the uh, animals that we'll be talking about in our class today or no animals on Earth are considered self-feeding in that they make their own food. All animals fit into another group called heterotrophs, which is an organism that has to eat another organism. There are groups of heterotrophs. There are herbivores. Herbivores eat plants only, like this here zebra. Carnivores eat meat only. This is a picture of a bear eating a deer. Bears really don't fall into the um, category of carnivore. I just like this one. Um, they more fall into the next category, which is an omnivore, which kind of eats all the things. So they kind of more opportunists and are able to take advantage of any sort of food source. And then there are uh, saprophagus organisms, which feed on dead material. This is a picture of daddy long legs that does not have the world's smallest mouth or the world's most potent venom. They feed on dead material. They do not have fangs. And so there are some organisms that feed on really tiny things called particulate. Uh, it could be just what we would think of as floaties in the water. Um, but a lot of times the floaties in the water are organisms called plankton. They could be phytoplankton, which is plant plankton. They could be um, animal plankton or zooplankton. Either way, they are really small organisms and they float and kind of are kind of suspended in the water column. And so you have different kinds of feeders. You have suspension feeding. These organisms feed on those plankton. This is a picture of a whale. Whales, um, this sort of whale anyway, the baleen whales, they have this baleen here. You can see it's like a filter and it literally filters out all the little plankton and it eats them. Uh, these whales can get very big. And so this is a, a good food source. So it's not like the most things that are eating this small stuff don't necessarily have to be small also. Uh, you have filter feeding, like this little shrimp here. This is a really small organism. And filter feeding is more like drawing the um, fluid over these little filters here, kind of like filtering it into their mouth and eating those particulate. There are also um, deposit feeders, which I don't think I have a picture for. Uh, this is feeding on like disintegrated organic material at the bottom of you know, a lake or a stream or whatever. <clears throat> All right. So there are organisms also that don't feed on particulate. They feed on like big chunks of food, like predators are an example of this. Predators are the one catching the food, like these wolves. The prey are whatever this thing is. It's being eaten. Looks like some sort of deer or something. And uh, predators have lots of adaptations for eating teeth uh, or one adaptation crocodiles or alligators have um, teeth that basically create a serrated or not serrated perforated edge and so it allows them to tear their food um, lions and other uh, carnivores have these big um, canine teeth that allow them to um, basically choke their prey by sinking those teeth into their bloodstream um, and then you have other organisms that have like um, these big crunching kind of teeth like um, these are this is a hippo skull and so it can crunch vegetables but it also has um you know these big incisors out here that you can see this is just really sharp and it's um they use those for fighting um not really necessarily for eating they're not a good eating tool but they can just um fight hippos kill more uh humans than any animal on earth i think besides bees maybe All right, there are animals that feed. Uh, oh, actually, I missed one. So claws are another type of ad adaptation. Um, you know, some like this is a some sort of raptor bird has these big claws to catch food. Uh, some animals use their mouth parts to catch food. So it, like a lot of insects in particular, uh, frogs use their tongue. So there's a lot of adaptations for predators. Some animals are fluid feeders, which means they literally feed on the fluid of other organisms. Here's a mosquito um, eating off of a person. And you can see this is their mouth that has modified mouth parts in order for um, kind of 
getting into the fluid of another organism and filling itself with their juices. Uh, so a little bit about digestion now. Um, so some digestive modifications. One of those is salivary gland, which lubricates food, makes it easier to consume. Um, also um, produces uh, chemicals that begin breaking down the food, depending on the organism. Some organisms have um, venom or other toxins in their saliva, which can help to um, stop their prey from moving or just kill their prey outright. And then you have um, another picture. I don't have a picture of this, but you know, a tongue is also uh, a digestive mechanic. Some organisms, like I said earlier, use their tongue to catch prey, but others just use their tongue to kind of break down food mechanically. Um, I don't know if I have a picture. I do. The crop and gizzard are a couple of other um, modifications. The crop is a food storage organ. And so it kind of stores the food in order to moisten it. And then you have, there's a crop and gizzard right here. This is of an earthworm. And so in the gizzard is like an area that is a muscular area that kind of grinds the food with, it'll eat rocks and it'll grind the food. Birds have these also. Some organisms or some animals have a rumen, which a rumen is like, um, think of a multi-chambered stomach. And the purpose of the rumen is to further break down cellulose in plants. This is a picture of uh, a cow that has a hole in its side. Uh, I mean, it just is. And so I guess you can look in there and see what's going on if you wanted to do that. And I guess this is the the cap, the new cap for its stomach. Um, small intestines, part of digestion is for the absorption of nutrients as organisms progress and particularly get larger, more small intestines needed to um, gather more materials. And then there's the large intestine also that is used, or the colon, so what you'll hear is used for the reabsorption of water. So a couple things on nutritional requirements. I have vitamins here, but I'm going to skip um, sk skipped a couple things that are necessary, like carbs and lipids. Uh, these just macromolecules in general, proteins. Um, water, obviously uh, vital for all animals to survive. Um, other minerals. So when we talk about vitamins and minerals, you probably have heard those times, those used together. Minerals are things that are non-organic. So like inorganic uh, minerals like sodium, chlorine, um, typically you think of like metals, like uh, magnesium is one too, um, phosphorus, these sorts of things. Uh, vitamins are organic materials and they basically function as coenzymes. Uh, they're not for energy. So you don't, you know, you don't eat your Flintstones for energy. They uh, basically provide uh, just a balanced, um, Bounced nutrition for, you know, providing those mechanisms that are going on in your body. When people have vitamin deficiencies, certain processes don't work as well as they should. But usually if you have a good diet, you should not have a vitamin deficiency. Some vitamins are water soluble, meaning they dissolve in water and other vi uh, vitamins are fat soluble. And so they dissolve themselves in fat and they can actually be stored in fat. And so uh, one example of this is like beta carotene people who eat a lot of beta carotene, particularly small people like babies, if they really like carrots or like sweet potato baby food, they can actually start to turn kind of orange because the beta carotene will be stored in their fat and it will take a while for it to get out. 